Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about Vala. In this tutorial we're gonna take a look on how to better organize our files and how to adapt our Amazon build in order to be comfortable with our new file structure. This episode is brought to you by Skysilk. If you're looking for a powerful, reliable and affordable VPS in the cloud, skysilk.com is the answer for you. Look no further for amazing, powerful cloud computing machine starting as low as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to learn more. So up until now, we created all our files, in our case, window.vala, main.vala, and application.vala in our base root directory of our project. Uh, this is fine if you have few files and your application is really simple and you can handle it even, you could potentially build your entire application in one single file. But since we want to do something more complex, we want to use multiple files, maybe have an API or check how some more advanced thing work, it's really hard to maintain a clean file and folder structure if you have all your basic Vala files in the base directory. So what I like to do and what is also recommended by the elementary guideline is to have all your Vala files organized in a source folder, properly organized in different subdirectories in order to be easily searchable and recognizable by other developers or simply being more easy to contribute to. So first what I like to do, I like to create a new folder called SRC. Now let's actually move all these files, so the application Vala, main Vala, and window Vala inside our SRC folder. We can also delete the test here because it was the test and my app was like the, those were the old version of our application and already the structure looks way better. Look at here, we just don't have any file in the base directory so it's not gonna get longer and longer. We just have configuration files and readme and instructions and all the things that you need and then all our files are inside the SRC. Perfect. Then inside the SRC folder I want to create a new folder called uh, uh, and you can literally call this whatever you want, but I want to call it widgets. And in the widgets, I'm going to put all the front end related things, all the widgets or all those files that are tapping a specific GTK widget in order to be triggered by our application. So in our case, the main doesn't trigger any GTK widget. The application triggers the GTK application, but I prefer to leave these as a regular rule in the base SRC because it's one of the, it's actually the first file that gets included and gets called. So this is not like a widget that is getting used multiple times. I want to put in the widgets folder the window because the window is just an application window is the proper widget and it could actually be called multiple times if we handle our application with multiple windows. So I'm going to move the window.vala inside the widget. There you go. Now, of course, well, I closed this because it doesn't exist. Of course, if we try to run our Ninja Mason, we'll, we will have a lot of errors. And the main error is just the files that we specify that do not exist anymore because we changed the location. So in our Mason.build, we can quickly fix this by actually specifying the directory where our file are. So all our files are actually in the source folder and then the main is there and also our application is in the source folder and this window is in actually the source dash widgets dash window. And of course we can change this by switching it and we can also create and leave some empty space if we wanna make it more readable for ourselves. This is not really a mistake. So if we open our terminal and run Ninja once again, uh, the compiling process was done and there's really no work to do because we didn't update any file. And of course, if we try to trigger our application uh, that it's called Jarvis, our application runs properly and there's no problem. But let's optimize a little bit more our file structure because yes, also in this case, we have one Meson build and we just have three files and it's pretty standard, and pretty easy to manage. But what if we have multiple files, for example, like, 20, 30, or 40 files, and that, that could happen with a Vala project. And what if we have multiple options in our basic Mason build where we specify different Vala arguments, we include different packages, this thing can get easily out of end, and we need a way to actually split our building system in multiple files and be easier to manage. And Mason allows us to do it in a really simple way. So first, 
let's create a new mason.build file inside our source directory. Let's call a new file and let's generate this as mason.build. So we have another mason build file inside our source and inside this mason build in the source, we're gonna cut from the base directory, the root directory mason build, the executable session, and we're gonna cut it inside the mason build in the source folder. And of course, here we can change the syntax to mason. Perfect. So now that we have this, we need to just tell the mason build that is the one that is going to be actually triggered the mason file in our root directory, where we move these things. If we have other directory, we should include and we should investigate, we should actually consider when we run our build system. In order to do that, we can just simply specify in the subdirectory where other mason.build files are. So we can just simply say sub dir, open and close the brackets and as a string with single quote, we can specify the SRC folder. There you go. If we try once again, Ninja, we have an error because of course we are in the source folder. We don't need to specify once again, then all of these are folder things, source, source, source. So we can say just simply, this is the main, this is the application. And then we have the window inside the widget.vala. Perfect. Let's run it again. Ninja. Nice. Our application was properly generated without a single problem. Awesome. So let's do another couple of quick updates. Now that we actually have the name of our application, that is Jarvis, let's unify our namespaces in order to use that. So let's open the SRC, our main file. We're not using anything. It's just application. This is application, but the name of application is Jarvis. Perfect. And we're not using any namespace here in the widgets window. Instead of my app, let's use Jarvis dot window. And this is my Vala test window, window. Perfect. In the application, we're using Jarvis dot window. Wonderful. So if we open once again, the terminal and we're on Ninja once again, no errors, our app can be compiled and we can run it once again without any problem. So now we have the basic structure that I really like to use in order to build, properly build a Vala application. So from next tutorial, we're gonna actually start building our Jarvis to-do list. I'm gonna see how to store some data in the G settings, how to install the application in our operating system, how to actually use the GTK widgets and Granite widgets to make our application look professional and really slick and not something that we build in five seconds. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next one, as usual, happy coding.